Hi folks, welcome to our fixturing recap series. In this series, we're gonna go over a whole range of work holding techniques, and hopefully these videos will serve as a resource or a way to inspire you when you're trying to figure out what's the right way to hold onto a part or build that fixture. Today, we're gonna to talk all about vices and 246 blocks. So what is a vice? Well, if you grew up woodworking or you're in your local hardware store, what you think of as a vice probably looks a lot different than what you see in a machine shop. One of the first differences is the profile and the shape of the vice. We prefer what's often called a CNC vice. These are vices that have flat and ground sides. This lets you do two key things. Number one, you could rotate the vice up on its side or you can use those precision flat edges to easily tram in the vise, whether you're sweeping it with an indicator or if you've got a fixture plate, a couple of dowel pins, and you can push that vise up against those dowel pins. This differs from the old school machinist vise that has a cast flange that you see like a lip around the profile of the vise. Nothing wrong with them. We just don't think they're quite as convenient. So another difference is how the screw closes that movable jaw. When you rotate the screw, you move that movable jaw toward the part and as you start clamping on it, that jaw is going to want to move in the path of least resistance. Well, because it's a movable jaw, there has to be some amount of clearance for it to move or slide. And so as you tighten it down, it's prone to jaw lift. That jaw is going to want to deflect or flex up instead of going straight into your part. Most CNC vices overcome this with two inclined planes that act against each other. So when you tighten that screw down, the top triangle is pushing against the lower triangle on the movable jaw. And what this does is it not only gives you clamping force forward, but also downward to help minimize or eliminate jaw lift. The third difference is the jaws themselves. Often on a bench vise, you're gonna see serrations. And on a machinist vise, it's totally smooth. Serrations are great, they really bite into that two by four when you're on that home renovation project. On a machinist vise, that wouldn't work because we want to hold our parts really accurately and we don't wanna mar them with the imprint of a serration. So even though a machinist vise has totally smooth jaws, they're still able to offer incredible work holding power through the amount of clamping force that's applied with the screw. It's common for a six inch machinist vise to offer five to 10,000 pounds of clamping force on a part. It's absolutely incredible. And we did a video diving into this topic of how much gripping power does a vise have. And there's a couple of really good takeaways from that video. The big one is that clamping force is different than clamping pressure. Clamping force basically means when you apply a consistent amount of torque on the screw, it's gonna push forward with a consistent amount of force. Clamping pressure has to do with how you distribute that force across the surface area of your part. What that really means is you can clamp with a relatively thin amount of material in the vise jaws without compromising the work holding. Because you're taking that fixed amount of force and you're distributing it across a smaller surface area means you have relatively consistent pressure. So that's a great example to our first video where we're holding onto a really small amount of material. Starting off with a part we made back in widget 203 of a mosquito airplane bracket part. Now we use a traditional vise, but the jaws are a little bit different. We wanted to minimize the amount of material we held onto, and so we're using talon jaws. Now you can purchase these from Mighty Bites or companies like Mighty Bite, or we've got a video on Wednesday widget 126 where we walk through how you can take a piece of steel, drill and tap it, machine that slot, and then use talon grips to hold material like we are in this video. You can also do this with the Saunders Machine Works Mod Vice. You'll see that more in this video as well. It offers the benefit of both low profile talent work holding as well as taller non-marring work holding. Back to the mosquito part though, we learned one really important lesson. This material is extrusion. And most, not all, but most aluminum that we come across is an extrusion. There's plate and cast as well, but extrusion is really common. And you can actually see the extrusion lines along the x-axis of this part. What that means is that there's going to be some amount of tension or stress in this material. Now, aluminum, in this case 6061, doesn't have as much stress as a cold rolled steel, but nevertheless, there is some stress. And that's the lesson that we learned is when this part was all said and done, we flipped it over and we decked the backside using traditional vice jaws the part had curved or bowed on us a little bit. Ways to solve that range from sending material out to be de-stressed. That can be done in its billet form or it can be done when you've done an op one where you've left additional material. You can also minimize that by trying to remove equal amounts of material on both sides of the part. Or in our case, what we could have done was try to cut away that bottom plane, leaving as much 
materials we can to accommodate that flex, reclamping it in a stress-free state and then redecking the material again. Nevertheless, it's a good lesson learned and something to be aware of. Next up, widget 190, we had to machine this part and we used a laser cut jig for the final operation. We started off holding the material in a Saunders Machine Works mod vise. Op two, we actually used the super glue technique to deck off the top hat, but we were left with the need in op three to hold the part at a specific angle, and that was difficult to do because the bottom of that part is curved. Now we laser cut this. You could also machine this jig, or perhaps the most easiest these days would be to 3D print it. But what this let us do was hold that final operation in a traditional hard jaw CNC vise, and not only does it handle that angled floor, but it also gave us a work datum that we could pick up off of. Next up, who doesn't love Lego? We wanted to make one of the brick removal tools as a educational video on CAD, CAM, and in this case, fixturing. Op one, we held in a Tormach five inch vise with parallels to hold the material relatively high up. And we machined the majority of the part away in op one. For op two, we used a vise plus a custom fixture that we had machined. We also used an angle jig to hold that custom fixture at the right location. This was the best CAM workflow for this particular part to get the part done in two operations. It would also be a relatively good way to think about if you're handling a production workflow where you wanna make these in higher quantity. So the takeaway for this video is not only some really good ways to machine a relatively complicated part, but also don't forget about the ability to use fixtures inside of a vise. Next up, we have this relatively tall ring that we needed to drill and thread mill a hole in. It had square faces, so a vise would hold it, but not tall enough or secure enough. Simple solution, sandwich the part between a pair of two, four, six blocks, which alone will massively help increase the clamping power of the vise. You can further improve it by adding a clamp itself across the two, four, six blocks as you sandwich the part. Continuing with 246 blocks, we did a part as a collaboration with Keith Rucker where he sent us a casting. And the problem with the casting was how were we going to hold onto it? We did have a piece of threaded rod as part of the casting, but that threaded rod was at a pretty nasty angle relative to the part. So again, we used a pair of 246 blocks, slid a couple of pieces of steel through there, which served as a backstop so we could then span a bar across them, thread a nut on that all thread that was part of the casting, and then we held that whole assembly in a vise. This also let us intentionally space the part slightly off or above the top of the 246 blocks, which let us use a Woodruff key to provide an undercut relief, allowing us to do this whole job in one setup instead of two. Next up, machining a Mitsubishi Evo shift lever. Earlier in this video, we had shown how we turned this part. We then had to hold it for an op two where we added fake knurling using a surfacing tool pack. The end of this part was tapped, so we used a spacer and a screw to hold the part on the left side with this 246 as a riser block to keep the part off of the base of the machine, but we needed a way to stabilize it. And on a part like this where it's really just a cosmetic finish, we want it to look good, we want it to be rigid, but we don't have the typical super tight tolerancing constraints that you may have in a lot of parts. So a simple toe jack allowed us to preload the tip of that part to add a fair amount of stability. Now in the end, that helped take out some of the chatter, but it wasn't as good a solution as we should have come up with. The better solution would have been to add a second 246 block with a jack screw coming out in line with the part, which would allow us to sandwich that part, preload the part, and really increase that work holding stability. And finally, don't forget about the value of 246 blocks when it comes to holding fruit and vegetables. Joking aside, there is a real takeaway from this video, which is we used studs to keep the 246 blocks relatively upright, but we didn't completely tighten those down. Rather, we allowed them to float. So we then used the F-style clamp to squeeze those in against a pumpkin, which is otherwise going to completely compress under the pressure of any sort of a clamp like this, but it did the trick for this job. One last note, one of the keys to long-term process reliability and accurate parts is being consistent. And vices will be incredibly consistent if you apply a consistent amount of force to the vice screw. And the best way to do that is with a torque wrench. So consider throwing that vice wrench away or just using it to loosen the vice and instead use a torque wrench that where you can set the value so that the first part and the 10th part and the 100th part that you're clamping are clamped with equal amounts of clamping force and clamping pressure. Hope you folks learned something. Hope you enjoyed. Stick around next week for soft jaws. Take care. See you soon.